Good morning, book club. Today, we're talking about Song of Achilles. Uh, in my Midnight Sun video, I said, getting emotionally wrecked by books just appeals something. I was specifically talking about this book. I don't usually cry when I read books. I really don't. I feel sad, but I don't cry. I cry about everything else, just not like movies or TV shows or books like usually don't make me cry. This book... I was absolutely wrecked. Wrecked, I tell you, okay? And which this says something because we know how Achilles ends. Like, it's literally like the main character is like, I'm in love with Achilles. I'm like, okay, well, we know Achilles dies. And then they tell you in the book, they're like, there's prophecy that he's gonna get got. And you're like, okay, I know he's gonna die. But literally... I, I, I'm at a loss for words. I don't know what to say. This book was so good. And I didn't think I was going to like it. For a long time, I was an idiot. And I was like, I don't know if I really like fiction. I just, I like maybe, I like more books that are like informational that tell you about something that happened. Like, um, my favorite book is The Indifferent Stars Above. That's about the Donner Party. Ooh, we can talk about that book too. But I, for a long time, I was like, I don't think I like fiction. What a moron I was. What an absolute moron. Oh, my God. Uh, historical fiction? Ah, beautiful. Okay? And then it's also like a romance. I love romance. I am literally the biggest moron alive. Speaking of romance, I also, I'm going to do a video on the Blood and Ash series. So from Blood and Ash and A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, I'm almost done I'm like one day of reading away from being done with that. I'm so excited to talk about those. So yeah, but for now, Song of Achilles. Ho, oh, oh, I read this literally. I started it at like 9 p.m. one day and then I finished it the next day at like 5 p.m. Like I've, oh, it's so good. Literally five out of five stars. Five out of five stars for everything, for taking me out of my quarantine depression, for the writing, for the romance, for the plot, for the mythology, okay? For the learning. This book's about learning, not only about romance. Oh my God, it's so good, dude. The writers, like, the writer I think was like a classical uh, text, classic lit teacher. And so she knows, like, she was inspired by the Odyssey. I don't, I'm like, I'm trying to like, compose my thoughts, but I just finished it like yesterday and I'm not over it. I'll never be over it. I don't think. Okay. So a light non-spoiler plot is that Patroclus. Okay. Well, what, what even is a, spo a spoiler? Because hey, spoiler for a story that happened like 2000 years ago. Um, a quick summary of the plot is that Patroclus was like Achilles right hand man in this book. They are lovers. They spent, like, Patroclus is exiled as a child. He goes and lives where Achilles lives. They become best friends. Um, then they discover that they love each other. They fall in love. And then they have to go to Troy for the Trojan War. Um, they're there for 10 years. And then, yeah, some stuff goes down there. If you're not familiar with the story of the Odyssey, then I'll just not... Um, say it what happens but yeah it's it's close to the like actual story but obviously there's some embellishment some people might be <laughs> mad about the <laughs> gay love story between Patroclus and Achilles but it's like they were around each other all the time they <laughs> um the reason why this might be a spoiler this might be a spoiler the reason why Achilles kills Hector is because he killed Patroclus. So uh -huh. that was in the actual story. That was in the actual story that the, he, the reason why Achilles dragged Hector's body around on his carriage is because he killed Patroclus. Okay, so it's not that far of a leap. Like, I don't, if people are mad about that, I don't understand why. It was a beautiful story, Okay. The author, Madeline Miller, does a really good job of conveying love, like conveying like all-consuming love where like your entire life is that person. 
and it's very dramatic type of love, but that's, it's a romance novel. <laughs> yeah, so there's some themes about lineages, like your family, especially your father. So Patroclus was exiled by his father, and he was like a disappointment to his father. Achilles, it was said that he would be better than his father. His father, Peleus, I think, was uh, like fought beside like Heracles and like the the greatest of the Greek heroes. So it was said that Achilles would be better than him. So like comparing yourself to your father. Achilles having to choose between a boring life where he'll just fade into oblivion and die unknown, but with Patroclus or die in battle and receive the glory and honor honor from that, uh, but losing time with his lover, even though they were in Troy for 10 years. So a lot of people in the book, <laughs> like the characters in the book are like, you guys have squeaked enough time out of this, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just very good. There's obviously been a lot of adaptations of the Odyssey and about the Trojan War and stuff. Um... I thought that this was a unique take because it's mostly a love story. And I think they only get to Troy like 60% of the way through the book. So only like 40% of the book is the events that take place there. The other is like them developing their relationship, Achilles developing like a set of morals and principles before he goes, same with Patroclus, them developing their bond, them learning the skills that they needed to be able to go to Troy. Um, yeah, it's just, like, I thought that all that buildup would be boring. Like, I was like, well, I'm 40% of the way through the book, and there's no, <laughs> we're not even in Troy yet. Like, we just keep talking about how we're going to Troy. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't boring at all. It was, it was delicious. It was all the character development, all the relationship development that I needed. It was beautiful. I like that Odysseus was, like, a little sassy little boy i liked that um achilles son turned out to be a douchebag oh because it's like okay so achilles mom <laughs> uh talk about mommy issues all right i talk about a mean ass mother-in-law patroclus has to put up with this lady who hates him uh and she's like don't taint his honor and he's like, I'll honor his taint. Was that too much? Was that inappropriate? I had I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna edit that out. I had I had to say it. Anyway, his uh Achilles' mom hates Patroclus. Uh she's trying to break them up. She tries to steal away Achilles in the middle of the night so that Patroclus doesn't know where he is. Patroclus finds him anyway. Thetis is like, Thetis is Achilles' mom, wants to have the best for her son. But she's not, like, a very loving presence. Like, Achilles gets the love that he needs from Patroclus. And then he gets it from the admiration of the people. And Thetis is kind of like, I tried to protect you. I tried to do everything I could to make sure that you'd be great. And sometimes Achilles... Achilles has to choose several times to, like, live up to that greatness. To live up to his reputation. And, like, in those moments where he's unsure, Thetis is, like, mean to him about it. And she goes and takes his son and raises him to be just, like, a douchebag. And so then after Achilles dies, Patroclus and Thetis get to talking. And I think that's when she kind of realizes that, or Patroclus helps her realize that Achilles' greatness, part of it was, like, his skill in battle and murdering people. But there was another part of it, too, where he was a good person. He, like, liked to play the liar. He saved Briseis and a bunch of other women from being, like, war prizes. And they were actually able to have, like, a life in captivity. All this stuff. And Patroclus, like, goes through all, this things with, all these things with her. And then I think she realizes that she <laughs> f***ed up on Achilles' son. Because uh, greatness doesn't really come from just being an absolute ruthless, horrible person comes from being a good person and building relationships and being a good leader, which Achilles was and his son was not. Just the book, it's such a 
the reason why the story is good, why it has had so many adaptations is because it's easy to pull a piece of the story and then like there's so many themes and motifs and morals like embedded in that story already. It's very easy to project whatever you want onto the story, get whatever you want out of the story. Um, I think that's why it's so good. That's why this book is so good. Um, also the romance part of it. Ah, man. It's so good. It's just good. It's just good. Everybody needs to read this book. I I found this by searching on Goodreads. Here's my Goodreads. Uh, perusing through there. I'm mad. I'm mad at everybody that I didn't get a verbal recommendation of this book. I would have read it like a year ago. I should, um, as soon as I had ever learned of this book, I should have read it. Oh man. Song of Achilles, like I said, five out of five stars for everything, for literally everything, uh, for making me learn how to pronounce all these Greek names. Um, which I've also avoided in this, like, I'm not going to say Achilles' son's name. I'm not going to do it. Five out of five stars for the romance, taking me out of my quarantine depression for the mythology, the story, for the plot, for the war scenes. Oh my God. This lady is writing like the most tender, like scenes between two lovers and then writing like very graphic and suspenseful like scenes of battle madeline miller you amaze me um there's another book by hers i want to read it's on my want to read list so maybe we'll get to that but like i said next is the blood and ash books um i'm really pumped about those so yeah thanks book club see you on the next one